Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce and welcome today's Central Vermont OLLI speaker, Michael Wood Lewis, co-founder and CEO of the very popular Front Porch Forum. <laughs> Um, Michael Wood Lewis and his wife Valerie founded award-winning Front Porch Forum that now hosts a network of online local forums linking every town in Vermont. Previously, he led a trade association in New England of New England Utilities. He also guided a consortium of U.S. municipal leaders developing environmental technologies building on his experience as an inventor of high-tech recycling equipment. He has a master's in engineering from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, as well as an MBA. Michael, Valerie, and their kids are deeply ingrained in the Five Sisters neighborhood of Burlington. We are very happy to give you Michael Wood Lewis. Wow, what an, what an introdu introduction. Thank you, Marge. That was great. Um, well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm a Detroit Tigers fan. I'm going to start with that. Anybody here following baseball? The Tigers have been in the basement for years and years and years. They've made a miraculous run over the last couple of months to squeak into the playoffs, and they won the first game last night. So I got to wear this hat before something else happens. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to say it out loud, uh, because there, there haven't been many opportunities to wear that hat publicly in the last 10 years. Um, and now I can tell my kid and my brothers uh, that I wore the hat today. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm Michael Wood Lewis. I'm here today to talk about, as it says, building resilience in Vermont communities um, through our work with Front Porch Forum and share some of what we've learned and how it works. Uh, first, I want to say a big round of thanks. I might nod off, but it sounds like it's good. Okay. Um, I want to say a big uh, gratitude, uh, expression of gratitude to the folks at Lamoille Valley Ollie. Um, it's a real pleasure to be invited in and to speak to this group. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing for a guy who hosts online forums in every town in Vermont to get my towns mixed up. I am sorry. We also spoke in Stowe um, earlier this year. And somebody, <coughs> me, hold on a sec. So, my name is Michael Wood Lewis. I'm a Detroit Tigers fan. Wow, okay. So now I don't feel as bad. I did remember to update and change the slide deck. Um, I just pulled up the wrong one. So my apologies. And again, thank you to Ollie um, and to UVM. So, uh, yeah, let me jump right into it. Now that I'm probably way, way behind in time. Um, so. Quick show of hands, how many folks are familiar with or use Front Porch Forum? Um, wow, okay, terrific. Um, thank you. So um, I, will, I will give you the, not the FPF 101 story. I'll skip some of the things since you're already familiar with it. Um, my wife, Valerie, was here earlier. She had a, uh, she's helping a student over at Spalding, so she has to jump out. 
Uh, but she and I started Front Porch Forum now quite a while ago. Um, in 2000, we started a version in our own neighborhood to try to help build community um, in our single neighborhood. And after five or 10 years, I left a, a job that I was doing um, in an environmental organization and thought, I think there's a, something here. Uh, it was so successful in our single neighborhood. And so we took a leap of faith. Um, I didn't go back and find a job. We, our fourth child had been born a month before, four kids in six years. Somehow I thought in that moment, now would be a great time <laughs> to start a business. Uh, it's one of those things you look back on and say, how in the world and why? Um, but it, you know, I'm, I'm grateful now uh, that it all worked out. But it continues on as a mission-driven business. Um, we are a Vermont public benefit corporation, like a B Corp. That means our social mission is baked right into our legal charter. Um, and our social mission is, to be real clear, to um, help neighbors connect and build community. It's all about contributing toward more resilient Vermont towns and neighborhoods. Um, so we start, got our start in 2000. 2006, we incorporated been growing kind of slow and steady ever since then, focused in Vermont. Now we serve every town and neighborhood in the state. Uh, we have uh, 30 employees um, scattered around the state. Uh, that's what it takes to you know, run, run this show um, every day, serving all 252 towns in the state. Um, and perhaps our most remarkable number, I'm gonna throw some numbers at you and some stories today, um, is among Vermont's 270,000 households that exist in the state, we have 235,000 active FPF members. So Front Porch Forum is by far the most used form of social media, more than Facebook, other things in the state. It's um, more, you know, bigger audience than traditional media um, or like VT Digger, et cetera. All great organizations, we wish them the best, and we're allied with many of them. But that's the kind of scale we've grown to. People often don't have that sense because each instance is just focused on your local town, right? And so it it's, uh, can be hard to kind of extrapolate out and see where it is. So if you use FPF, you know about lost dogs and borrowed ladders and plumber recommendations and all that great kind of stuff. Um, that's our bread and butter. Occasionally, things get into you know, difficult territory with hard conversations, and we don't discourage that as well. I mean, we, as, a, as a society, we need to be able to talk about hard things, right? And so our concept is through thousands of daily exchanges among neighbors all across the state, we build social capital. You know, we build connection with people when we're borrowing the ladder, when, we're, when, we're talk, when we show up to help uh, rebuild a playground, um, when we uh, take soup over to a sick neighbor. All those things that have always happened in Vermont. Um, but Vermont, our Front Porch Forum helps stimulate more of that. And you know, it, more important than ever, these, we don't need to tell anybody, these are hard and divisive times. Hard times with um, climate change disasters and economic uncertainty, all these other th things. I, I won't run down the list because I'll feel my heart start to constrict. Um, and the divisiveness and you know, everything's going on in the country right now. People are being driven by fear and by social media and everything else into more isolation. Um, and so I applaud everyone for coming out today. Um, and Front Porch Forum tries to push in the opposite direction. It says, hey, the people around you aren't terrible even if you don't know them. Reach out, stay tuned in, hear what they have to say, show up with a baked lasagna or whatever once in a while. Um, and that's, I think that's a big part of our way up and out of many of our current problems. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna start this. Susanna, could I ask you to um, use the mouse pad over there and start this, uh, this is a little two minute video clip I'll explain it for a moment, then I'll ask you, Susanna, to start it. Um, right before the pandemic, a young Canadian filmmaker came down and wanted to make a short documentary about how Vermonters were using Front Porch Forum. And he said, kind of menacingly, um, 
we're going to do this. Do you want to cooperate or not? And so I thought, well, I guess we better cooperate. And so this is a two-minute trailer for it. Uh, I think he does a great job of kind of showing um, uh, a slice of FBF. Uh-oh. you got to go back now one step with the back arrow on the keyboard. There we go. And now if you can move the mouse somewhere, how, just click. Not going to work. Hmm. Oh, there. Oop. Sorry to put you on the spot here. Vermont is a very rural state. In fact, it's the second most rural state in the U.S. People come here because they want to connect to the land. They want to connect to real community. But as our societies change, um, as the internet changes the way we interact with the world, we are seeing stress on what we call social capital, the trust, the neighborliness, the reciprocity. I don't know all my neighbors and their phone numbers and those kinds of things. It's the everyday life we live is fast paced that keeps us away from our neighbors. So. A lot of people, particularly early on, imagine the internet as transcending the local, as being about this kind of alternate electronic space. And that has uh, completely come apart in the popular imagination. We have this tremendous sort of pride in our our place that we represent something and one of the things we represent is real local democracy. And so Front Porch Forum, it feels like a natural thing to have started here. The hook, if you will, for Front Porch Forum is that it's local. It's just the people in your neighborhood who wanted to emulate a block party. In one town, everyone but one person had participated in Front Porch Forum. They were like, wow, what's going on? Did you guys put this in the drinking water or something? How did, you know, we kind of went, whoop, you know, everyone adopted it. Dude, Front Porch Forum, it's the shit. Instagram and Front Porch is all I need. <laughs> it started to become like a part of my life. It wasn't like an experiment anymore. So we sort of all have a kind of a, a private self and a public self. And I think that a lot of places, people don't really know how to have a public self. It's good for neighbors to know each other and to communicate regularly. It happens less and less. Perhaps some of you saw that documentary. We did screenings around the state, again, just before the pandemic. Um, but if you'd like to see it, um, Vermont PBS hosted it on their website for a while. I don't think it's there anymore, but it is on our website if you're interested. You can find it at frontporchforum.com. It's 22 minutes, I believe. Um, so I mentioned FPF is in every town in the state, uh, whether that's 251 or 252. Um, I think we just split Essex uh, and that notched it up, but uh, I'm, I haven't, haven't counted lately. Um, and anyone can join their local forum, and you can read and post. Uh, in addition to neighbor members, you see the numbers there in the bottom right, uh, we have thousands and thousands of local small businesses, nonprofits, and local public officials who participate in their local forums. And that's critical. It's, uh, it's really about the neighbors, but it's, it's about the community. And so we need those other entities to participate as well. Uh, most folks think of Front Porch Forum as an email forum that arrives in their inbox, and that's great. But I wanted to point out that in addition to the forum, each local community has a community calendar, a business directory, a search function, and paid advertising. And that's how we pay those 30 people. Um, and you can access Front Porch Forum through our mobile app, through our website, or through email. So. And then, of course, you can use any device you want, laptop, a phone, a tablet, iPad, whatever. So um, lots of different ways to kind of get at it. Um, here's some examples of what I was just talking about. So this is what, on a mobile phone, it would look like when you're looking at your forum in Montpelier. This is an issue from a few weeks ago. Uh, Beverly talked about a, a, a jury uh, scam that someone was trying to hook her with, uh, warning neighbors, Kathy had a recommendation for pest control, et cetera. Um, 
Nathan wanted to talk about a bursting garden. Uh, and then on the community calendar, which is also accessible, you know, the form can come to, via email to your inbox, but if you want to access the calendar and the directory and search, you need to go to our website or use our mobile app. And so the calendar um, has loads of events that are put there by participants, by FPF members. Um, and the business directory, again, thousands of businesses. Uh, well, you can see there in the, let's see, I was told I can shoot a laser here. Cover your eyes. Uh, oops, wrong line. There we go. If you can see that, 546 businesses have created listings just in Montpelier. Um, 14,000 in the whole state. So if I want to look for a plumber, I probably want to look for one in Montpelier, maybe within an eight mile radius here. Um, if I want to look for a, I don't know, an antique clock repair person, I'd probably expand out to a bigger area. That would be a rare thing. Um, and then finally, the search function. So I'm gonna just zoom in on each of these briefly. So here we are at the forum. This is more a tablet view or a laptop view. And again, you see the postings. I I've uh, grayed out last names just to give a modicum of privacy for people. Um, and then you can see some statistics over there of um, how full the Montpelier Forum is. Uh, the Montpelier Forum is, uh, I have one colleague here, Susanna, uh, from our staff, um, but my, my colleagues who do all the content moderation, who review all the postings, whew, they're big fans and kind of worn out by Montpelier. <laughs> we have so many members um, of the Montpelier Forum who post so frequently, um, and it's terrific. We love it, but it's, uh, it's like, uh, order of magnitude more than many other towns in the state. Um, but you can see there have been 178,000 postings um, in the Montpelier Forum si since it started a decade ago. Um, and a bunch of local officials participate. Um, and here's you know, a little map for reference. So that's the forum. That's the core thing. Uh, but again, the community calendar, here's from a couple weeks ago, just on a Sunday, uh, there were five events that were listed in the calendar, a bunch on the Tuesday. And if you click on that, it would zoom in. So, for example, clicking on uh, this memorial walk for pediatric cancer, you get all the details, um, you know, it would pop up, including a map, et cetera. Um, you can tune the calendar to here, it's local, just, just Montpelier events. If I want to, you know, expand it out to more of Washington County, um, I could click that. Uh, the business directory works in a similar way. Uh, we looked at that a minute ago. This is a zoomed, uh, zoomed out version. Um, lots of businesses. And people can go in and you can, uh, we don't really do negative reviews or thumbs down or anything like that, but we do give an opportunity to give a thumbs up or what is it, a heart, I guess now. We experiment with different symbols. But you can see Bolt Electric has a lot of fans. Um, has uh, 14, uh, there it is, 14 hearts. And then search. There's a search bar at the top of every page, um, the email forum, the website, the uh, mobile app. And you just type in whatever you're looking for. So I was looking for a dog walker or some dog walking. And I got back f uh, results for forum postings, directory listings, and calendar events. If I want to say, well, actually, I'm not interested in calendar events. I'm really looking to hire a professional person. I could drill down in the directory and see what I get and look at these 11 results. Or if I really want to look more about what the neighbors have to offer, I could drill in here and, and narrow the search. So again, super powerful. Everything you've ever seen on Front Porch Forum remains on our website. A lot of times people say, oh, I can't find the email. Where'd it go? There was a plumber recommendation last year. It's all on the website. You can find it, just type in. Works like Google search would work. So again, you've got uh, the forum, the calendar, the directory, and search. All of these are for Montpelier. So if I, I made a little tiny symbol there to show how all four of those things come together, and I'll put it on a map here. So Montpelier has its collection of, of those four features with tremendous level of participation 
And that's true in every town across Vermont, right? So whether you're, you're next door in uh, Moortown or East Montpelier or Berlin or wherever, or up in Burlington or down in Bennington, um, people are using this service in that way. And with each of our features, forum, calendar, directory, you can see into neighboring communities as well. And, and whether you browse or search. So the focus is on your local single community, but you can see somewhat into surrounding communities. Um, and of course, yeah, we're, we're across the whole state. So that's a little bit about how FPF works. But now I, what I, where my passion is, is what I hope it accomplishes, which is really helping Vermonters accomplish something. Um, it's really what Vermonters accomplish. So our basic concept, our theory, is more connection with neighbors, more and better local information, leads to people being better informed and getting more involved. And when that happens, you end up with stronger, more resilient communities. So people often say, when we started this project, I talked to some foundations and other folks, and I, I talked about the impact I'd seen in my local community, you know, where people came together, knew each other better, got more involved. And they said, well, we can't write a grant to you for helping people find lost cats. That's ridiculous. And I said, well, it's not just the lost cats. And, or, and you know, they said, well, we can't help people organize yard sales. That's ridiculous. And one thing after another, they'd poke a hole in it. And I said, it's the cumulative effect, right? It's thousands of times in Montpelier over a month, people are seeing these postings, they're talking about them, they, they, they decide to act or they don't. They, and and per perhaps the biggest change, what we've um, found from a, uh, some research that was done on Front Porch Forum a while ago from an outside group, is the biggest impact is the witnessing the daily acts of neighborliness that goes on in Front Porch Forum. So in this era when you're watching CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or you're on your computer and Facebook and looking at all this stuff, fear, right, goes up. This feeling of other and worry and oh my gosh. And Front Porch Forum moves people in the opposite direction. It says, well actually, I'm surrounded by people who are human like me and who are going through challenges, struggles, who are sharing their knowledge or sharing their gardening tools or willing to pitch in. And it, it really um, changes, can change one's perception of their local community. Um, okay, if you'll indulge me, I just want to talk about Sandy here in Middlesex. I thought she did an excellent ex uh, uh, illustration of this phenomena. She wrote last winter, Mother Nature is not always kind to Middlesex roads. Uh, Center Road just turned into a sheet of ice last night as I was coming home from a development review board meeting. Thank you to all neighbors and board members for coming out. My trusty Subaru that normally gets me through anything was no match for one of the hills. Thankfully, I got stuck in front of the house of two people I volunteer with on different town projects. They welcomed me, fed me, we worked on a jigsaw puzzle, <laughs> and before the night was through, we were joined by another neighbor with two dogs who also got stuck in front of their house. They gave us both warm beds to sleep in. We had a middle sex slumber party. It was fun to visit and catch up. Thanks to our trusty road crew, we were all on our way in the morning. A huge thank you. I'm enormously grateful for the kindness that abounds in our middle sex community. Isn't that great? I, and I, I have to tell you, I'm really proud of myself. I didn't uh, cry. Usually that makes me cry. It's so, it's so touching and human. Like this is, I think, what our world needs more of. And what I see Sandy doing is, is whatever role FPF played or didn't play, she got involved. She got involved in the Development Review Board, other town committees. She got herself in a pickle because of the ice. I mean, she found herself in a, in a spot, and she's like, well, I live in a community where I bet I can knock on a door and somebody to help me out. Lo and behold, somebody she, she had a connection to, this, you know, another person comes into the picture, and, you know, um, yeah, so 
This is an encapsulation of what we're trying to help promote more of. Um, in addition to neighbors and community and all that, other critical players in this process, are the local business sector, nonprofits, local government, local journalism. And Front Porch Forum plays roles in all of those areas too. Um, I, I don't think I've met a Vermont journalist who doesn't use Front Porch Forum uh, to source story ideas. And we're thrilled with that. We're, we're, we're really grateful that, that we're able to provide a service to them. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, thousands of local town officials, town clerks, administrators, et cetera, who make great use of FPF. Um, all right. I, my background's engineering, so this is my favorite part. Um, but I've been warned that I'm not normal. Um, and so I'll, I'll skip over some of the numbers here. But an independent survey was done uh, last year by a research center in Texas, University of Texas, Austin. They put out a survey. They said, well, we need a couple thousand people to fill it out. I said, wow, I bet more than that will fill it out. 13,000 Vermonters filled out a 20-minute survey. Maybe some of you did, uh, if you remember. Um, anyway, some of the key findings. Vermonters love their local forums. You see the percentages there. 97, 93% find it super valuable to their community or to themselves personally. 80, this one, I love this third point. 80% feel that people treat each other humanely on Front Porch Forum. That same group said only 20% thought that was true for Facebook. Um, second point, Vermonters trust their local uh, Front Porch Forum and, you know, because it's full of their neighbors. 85% uh, frequently turn to FPF for local news. 78% uh, see FPF as a reliable source of information versus 16% thought Facebook was a reliable source of information. Um, and you might notice I pick on Facebook once in a while. That, that's nothing to, that's no, it's throwing no shade on people who use Facebook. I, I use it occasionally as well. Um, but the corporation itself, I got a lot of problems with. Um, uh, FPF creates connection, uh, what the survey found. Uh, and this is perhaps my, my favorite, uh, oops, I'm on. My favorite uh, statistic of all, 89% of those of FPF members uh, take action multiple times per year in response to what they see on FPF. And again, it's kind of bottom line for us. We're hoping that people will c connect with their community, with their neighbors, get active, get involved, show up <laughs> at events like this, uh, and, and more. Um, Let's see, I'll go to the next one. Uh, last one here, FPF stimulates buying local. Um, <coughs> it's hard to have a resilient, strong community if your main street is all boarded up. Um, and so we're big proponents of buying local and, and a vibrant local economy. Um, we do a lot to stimulate uh, people connecting with local contractors to buying local retail, uh, et cetera. Um, boy, do we get lovely testimonials. And to any of you who've ever sent us a heartfelt note about some positive experience, thank you. We literally, amongst my colleagues, we pass them around. It, it really um, makes all the work we do. And we, we have a lot of challenging work. We, we get people who get pretty bent out of shape um, that we contend with at times. Um, so hearing, like Bernadette and Randolph, I received so many tips for a walker after surgery. I love FPF. You know, th those kind of things really matter. Karen talking about moving into Fairhaven and how helpful Front Porch Forum can be for a new resident, new, new to town. Um, uh, Diane in Burlington down the corner there, neighborhoods have changed considerably since many of us were young. Thank goodness we have wonderful connection, a connector um, in Front Porch Forum. Um, and, and yeah, just, just more great quotes um, from around the state uh, that come into us. We, we really, literally our problem with these is we have so many it's hard to keep track and, and reply and make use of them um, to, to help inform folks. Uh, but, but please keep them coming if you have anything uh, to share. And, and obviously we also always open for critical feedback and new ideas. Uh, that's how most of our platform's been shaped by user feedback. 
Um, some of you may have seen earlier this year, Seven Days did a terrific feature article about how Vermonters are using Front Porch Forum. Um, I'll show some samples from that in a minute. Um, also, it was mentioned earlier, uh, before, before we started the presentation, uh, last month the Washington Post did a tremendous piece on Front Porch Forum, and, and again, Vermonters um, and, and how they're making use of it. Um, I love their headline, at least the first half of it. Uh, the friendliest social network, yeah, you've never heard of. Eh. Um, other you know, nonprofits, uh, New Public and Electronic Frontier Foundation, a couple of uh, notable um, nonprofit groups in, in uh, the civic space nationally have been writing about us. Um, these are some of the beautiful pieces that Seven Days produced. Uh, they collected, and this is one from Montpelier. Um, I don't think Jacqueline's here today. Uh, but uh, they sent out three reporters. Well, we shared with them. We, we did kind of a deal where they promised to not uh, invade anyone's privacy. But we shared with them um, one day's worth of postings from across the state. And they wanted to write a kind of day in the life story just from those collection of postings. They then turned, and so it's, I don't know, a thousand postings or something. They then turned three of their journalists loose on that pile. And I have to tell you, when, when they came back to us and said, we want to write little vignettes about maybe 10 of these. And when they showed me the 10, I was a little disappointed. Um, they weren't the remarkable you know, story, the saving the person you know, from the lake or whatever. You know, they, were, they were more mundane, um, everyday things. But I should have had faith. Uh, their reporters did a terrific job of seeing each of these stories as kind of a tip of an iceberg. And underneath the water, there was just great things for them to uncover. And so um, this, someone put, Jacqueline in Montpelier said she was looking for someone to make a dress for her for the special event. And uh, off the shelf, this never works for her, off the rack never works for her, and she never wears dresses anyways, but this is this one special thing, and you know, had this kind of heartfelt thing. Well, somebody stepped up. And there was this beautiful story of this dress being made and a friendship kindled. And uh, yeah, and so if you want to read all this, uh, go uh, on Seven Days website and type in Front Porch Forum, and you can see all these stories in detail. Um, Edora. Uh, Elementary school principal in Starksboro every year puts out a call through Front Porch Forum for donations of mittens and hats and boots for recess. Because, curious enough, I didn't know this happened, but little kids lose mittens. Um, and, yeah, and, and, you know, they want frostbite, and they sure as heck don't want the kids staying inside uh, when they need to run off some energy. So, um, and, Bless the seven days photographer, right? What, what beautiful images of Vermonters. Um, so that was a beautiful story. Oh, this one was uh, moving. Pam in Middlebury lost her husband. And in her grief, she was going through his things, realized he had this huge collection of things that were important to him that she didn't want to throw out, that she didn't want to just stick out on the curb for a yard sale. She, she wanted to do something that had meaning to her. Um, to her and in his memory. And so she reached out with that frame um, on her local Middlebury forum and found several people in town who came over and had meaningful conversations and they took these things away very gladly. And, and she had, you know, it, it was uplifting for her to feel like, oh, this is, you know, part of my husband's going to live on in these different corners of my town. And I was so, so glad she was willing to share that story. Um, Jennifer in the southeast quadrant of South Burlington posted for auditions for the Shelburne Players uh, drama outfit. You know, again, I thought, oh, that's pretty mundane. But the vignette that they wrote up on it was beautiful about how people come out and a person who hadn't done drama for years saw the posting, decided to give it a shot, and how he was encouraged, found community. Now that's like a core part of his uh, daily community. This is perhaps my favorite one. Um, in Johnson, the mystery of the white goose on the, on the river. Uh, would that be the Lamoille, I guess? Um, make sure I'm in the right town, I think so. Um, and 
where'd this white goose come from? You know, they're obviously domesticated, but, but it seemed to be getting along in the wild, and, and, and all these theories, and it seemed to be mixing uh, with the Canadian goose, and is that okay in this day and age? Anyway, um, it goes on and on, um, and they finally uh, you know, sorted it out, and uh, the, the reporter went and tracked all of the uh, thread of postings that interviewed people. Um, oh, this was shortly after the awful event in, in my town, in Burlington, the shooting of the three young Palestinian students last winter, and different groups got together to try to do different things. This was people who met at the Unitarian uh, space in Jericho, and they used Front Porch Forum to organize a big turnout um, to talk about um, nonviolence. Um, and I think this is my last one. This is a young woman in Perkinsville who is simply looking for, for gigs um, to make her personal economy work. Uh, and she, she found a plethora of, I think was her word, of um, dog walking and house sitting jobs and errand running. And as she did that, she met more and more people and felt more and more part of that community, got swept in, and was very grateful for that simple um, simple fact. So I'll wrap it up there. I'm most eager to hear about your experiences, your, your questions, comments, ideas. But I'll encourage you as I, as I wrap up here, if you haven't already signed up, and it looks like most folks have, please do, frontporchform.com. Read, post. You can search and browse any past stuff. You can also look, if you're in Montpelier, you can look at all the surrounding towns through our website if you're interested. Um, or, or use it for search. Um, a lot of people, you know, find a free couch that way, um, if that's what, you know, you're looking for, or, you know, need, need a ride somewhere, that kind of thing. And, and please, help us spread the word to more Vermonters. In Montpelier, Montpelier, we have incredible participation levels. That's not true in some reaches of the Northeast Kingdom and some parts of southern Vermont. Um, so, you know, we're, we're pretty much reliant on word of mouth. So, lots of mouths here. Please uh, spread the word. Um, yeah, and I'll stop there. I'd love to take any questions. I see hands in the back. Um, I'm not from Montpelier, but I am on Front Porch Farm. I have in the past posted for a local nonprofit, and somebody at Front Porch Forum shut my account down because apparently I posted more than once about free events that were going on. I've got it set back up, but I have no idea what the parameters are. Like, can I still post for this? I don't. I don't post that much anymore because I don't want to shut me down. I don't see whoever shut me down. They just shut my account. I had to reopen. Susanna, you got the handcuffs. Um, <laughs> we got a live one. No, just kiss kidding. I'm sorry uh, if you had a bad experience. Um, good. Yeah, and it sounds like we need to do a better job communicating that. So. <clears throat> I, I, I'm known for being long-winded. Um, my wife, Valerie, by, by the way, is right here, our co-founder, Front Porch Forum co-founder. If, if you want someone to verify if I'm long-winded. Um, so uh, Front Porch Forum, one of the key differentiators between the, this platform and big tech social media, like Facebook and Instagram and others, Twitter, is that we moderate all the postings before publication. That is, our paid staff look at every posting like a, like a newspaper would look at a letter to the editor and decide whether to publish it before they publish it. That's our model. It's labor intensive and time intensive. And that's why Front Porch Forum comes out kind of like a newspaper in an issue form. It's because we've vetted every posting. Now, 99% of postings go straight through, no problem, car for sale, yep, next. Um, but if, if the postings violate our rules, we, we bounce it back to the author and say, hey, this violates the terms of use that you agreed to follow um, in, the, you know, in some ways. Please address that if you would like us to take another look. Um, so no personal attacks, nothing illegal, um, can't sell guns on Front Porch Forum. Uh, and more recently, we had to be very explicit and say you can't traffic in disinformation on Front Porch Forum. We, we won't allow FPF to be weaponized um, in that way. So, I'm getting there. Um, so, we also, less known, 
is we also moderate accounts. So we have lots of people who come in and try to set up accounts using fake names. We have people who try to set up, um, uh, and, and it could be for political purposes, it could be for um, business purposes, you know, realtor, you know, we'll, we'll see one John Doe set up 12 accounts, you know, in all, in all these adjacent towns in one, you know, fell swoop. And we go in and shut them down. Um, one of the um, issues, and all these are different than what you're talking about, but in moderating accounts, um, an account can be one of four things, either a neighbor account, which is what the vast majority of people are, or a business or a nonprofit or a local public official account. So neighbor accounts are basically wide open. You all can participate as much as you want. But we constrain the nonprofit, the business, and the local government ones because what we found when we didn't do that is um, Front Porch Forum would become more of a PSA bulletin board. You know, the, the town clerk would post 25 updates about whatever, and the librarian would post a bunch, and then this nonprofit would post a bunch of things. And that's all important and compelling information, but we realized part of our job is a balancing act. And so when people post about um, nonprofit events they're involved with, that's great. We, we appreciate that. If they do it repeatedly, we say, please create um, a nonprofit account or have the nonprofit post that instead. And then they're kind of in the right lane, if you will. Yeah, that's, that's, good. Yeah, sounds like we need to do a better job. Okay. Yeah, which is great stuff. We want that content. So I'm sorry about that, but yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, on a nonprofit profile, actually. Um, we have free accounts for all those different four types, but then... Um, we'd also have paid versions if the free one isn't big enough. And again, that's one of the ways we cover our payroll. All on our website, frontporchforum.com. And if you need help, we have staff working every day who answer our member support. There's a help center. You can go right in there. That's a real live Vermonter who will respond. Yes? I have two, two questions. <clears throat> two years ago when I was moving, I was posting a lot and looking to get rid of stuff. Mm. And two things. that You used to be able to repost the same thing without writing it all out again. Mm. And it doesn't seem like you can do that any longer. And I also, at that point in time, met a quota where I, there was only, I was only allowed to post maybe eight times a month or something like that. I should have known better, yeah. I should have known better. I, I, I fudged a little bit in my last answer to say that neighbor accounts were unlimited. They are limited. I think it's set at 10 postings per month. And so if you post 10 times a month, when you try to post your 11th time, it'll say, hey, um, we try to have balance. Let's take turns. Um, because not in your case, but... We have people of strong political opinions who will come on every day and talk about the school budget yeah. or whatever. And we want people to participate, but we don't want people to, one person to drive away half the town from the conversation. And so we try to set up these tools to work in most cases, but sometimes they, they, they don't quite work as intended. So this feedback is really helpful. Um, Suzanne and I will take this back. But again, I'm sorry you hit those limits, but I hope it was useful. And what about... Um, being able to, like, try, right now I'm trying to get volunteers for the tax clinic, mm -hmm. and, and I'd rather not type out the whole thing again, but I can't go back to my last posting yeah. and say post again. I, I don't and think... You can, can you copy it? Could you repeat that? Yeah, you could copy it. So we do, we've never had the feature you described. Um, yeah, not, not that I'm aware of. Um, but you can, as folks sa suggested, uh, try to uh, select the text and copy and paste it into a new space. I'll try to do that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, two, two things. One, one links to what was over here. Number one, I wondered 
How local is your advertising and your calendar events? For instance, I don't live, I live in one of the smaller towns, East Montclair. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of businesses, not, uh, and I haven't noticed, actually. But how local is it? Do you, in my front porch form, do you advertise only businesses that are actually in the confines of East Montclair? <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that question. So um, businesses can participate in nonprofits on our platform in two primary ways. First, they can create an account, and that creates a listing for them in our business directory. So I showed a picture of that earlier that showed 540-something businesses in Montpelier who've done that. So there's some smaller number than that of East Montpelier businesses, and a lot of times they're businesses you've probably never heard of. You know, it, it's a contractor um, who's got a pickup truck and works out of his house, and you know his house is the uh, is in East Montpelier, perhaps. Um, so it's not always retail, you know, businesses uh, per se. Um, and then the other way that businesses and nonprofits use our service is they buy advertising. That's when they want to reach towns outside of where they are. So say there is a contractor in East Montpelier, uh, she might create an account in East Montpelier, show up in the business directory, so anybody in East Montpelier could see that contractor and in surrounding towns could also see that listing. But if she really wants to reach, say she wants to do work in Stowe, she could go come to us and say, I want to buy advertising in Stowe. And then the ads would run in Stowe. So um, our advertisers, our paid advertisers are the mix. They're all Vermont companies by and large, I mean, very rarely we'll get some out-of-state entity that's well, almost never I uh, can think of. It's, um, we do get some statewide programs like Department of Health wants to advertise COVID vaccines or you know, something like that. Um, but usually it's small local businesses and nonprofits um, who buy our ads. Right. Thank you. And my second question is about discussion moderation. Mm. I'm, I'm curious how you handle that? Do you have criteria, and what are they? Because clearly, moderation is a big deal on, yeah. on all social media. Yeah, yeah, that, it really is um, the biggest deal. Um, so, a couple of the um, media headlines I shared up here. Where were those? The Vermont Miracle. Uh, one platform is rewriting the rules of social media. And from Bangkok to Burlington, the public interest social internet, um, and even the, the top one from the Washington Post, um, they really, all those pieces are focusing on how Front Porch Forum is different um, than big tech social media. Um, we started with the premise that we wanted to fulfill our mission, which is building community in the place where we live which is very different than where you know, big tech folks started from. They wanted to start something that would you know, drain money out of all these small towns into, into their pockets. Um, and what they realized was uh, conflict was a great magnet for attention. And so they didn't try to screen out conflict, they tried to inflate conflict. And now look where we are. Um, so we're quite the opposite. We want um, people to have constructive, civil, positive, um, you know, interactions. And so it's, it's very difficult um, to do and do well, and, and we struggle. Um, before the 2016 presidential election, um, it was easier. Um, we would have, you know, one school budget debate somewhere in the state that was getting a little unhinged, you know, and that'd be about it. And then that would blow through and we'd be back to lost cats and barring ladders and everything was fine. Until the next election, then there'd be one or two new ones. Um, starting in with the 2016 election, what we saw was, you know, a change in our national culture and tenor of, you know, weaponizing misinformation and attacking people and, and you know, fear-based, fear-mongering, and all these kind of tactics. And um, it echoed throughout Vermont as it did everywhere else. And so on big tech social media it was happening, and on Front Porch Forum it was happening. 
And at first, we thought like, oh, this will blow, blow over like a regular school budget debate, but then we realized, no, this is getting more widespread and harder and worse, um, and more and more people. And so we did a lot. We made a lot of investments in our staff. We, we grew our staff. We grew our training programs. We rewrote our rules to be much cleaner and more explicit about what was permitted and what was not permitted. Um, and we got better tools for handling all our member support tickets. You know, it became a real, kind of went from a hobby kind of scale business to a, a real more established business. Um, but most of the time, what we, a simple test is if a posting on a discussion topic violates our rules, which we call our terms of use, we won't publish it. We'll decline to publish it. If it complies with our terms of use, we will generally publish it. So sometimes authors who get denied get angry with us. Sometimes, frankly, they're very grateful to us. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you. I was so hot under the collar when I wrote that, and I, I never should have hit send. Um, those ones we like. Um, but sometimes they get incensed, and we've been threatened, and you know, um, it's, it's not pretty. Um, uh, how, how, however, um, you know, it's, it's, it's necessary. Can you give an example of your terms of use in, and maybe an example of a case where you had to turn, you felt you had to turn something away? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear. Oh, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's a good reminder. Um, asking about, um, Content moderation, in a, in an example of when we maybe had to turn away a posting that didn't follow our terms of use. Sure, there are ones happening right now um, across the state regarding the Affordable Heat Act. So controversial act, it was passed by the legislature, vetoed by the governor, overridden by the legislature, and now is, and I'm, Front Porch Forum is apolitical. I should have said that somewhere. It's nonpartisan. Um, it's not, you know, meant to amplify any one party or any position. It's it's everything I just described. It's about building community, more resilient towns. Um, that said, we really refuse to have an FPF be weaponized in a dangerous way that threatens democracy, that threatens public health. Um, during the pandemic, we had people coming on saying just swill bleach and you'll be fine, the pandemic's all fake news, and like, no, you know, I knew people who were dying, you know, like, no, we're not gonna, you can't use our platform that way. Um, yeah, not easy um, to do. But the Affordable Heat Act, the opponents of it now are trafficking in a fair amount of disinformation, stuff they know is not right, um, they know it's not valid. It's going to increase your fuel oil by $7 a gallon or whatever. And there's no evidence of that. That's not what the reports say. We've, written, we've read all of these exhausting, uh, detailed reports to try to get to the bottom of it. And we recognize there are different opinions and different political stances, but you can't just make stuff up and, 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 and you know, make up numbers and have us, we're not going to publish made up numbers. So that's an example. And we've caught a lot of grief for that. Oh, you're clearly in this other camp. It's like, no, we're not in any camp. We just, if you want to talk about fact-based stuff, that's fine. But you can't make stuff up on our platform. Yes? Um, I have two things also. First of all, I, your logo is perfect. Please don't ever change it. I'm hearing that. <laughs> I'm wondering about um, someone things that are going on in the rest of the country, other kind of front porch forum things. Yeah, unfortunately, this, the short answer is not much. Sorry, yeah, thank you. Keep reminding me, I, I'll short memory. Um, wondering about, uh, first of all, appreciation for our logo, thank you, and then a question about other similar projects going on around the country akin to front porch forum. And I said there's not much that I'm aware of. Um, I used to have a spreadsheet of like 200 other projects around the country, like 10, 15 years ago, and they're all pretty much gone. Um, that's what Facebook has done. 
Um, you know, Facebook has just kind of astroturfed everybody's nice uh, uh, biodiverse space. Um, uh, and Nextdoor.com. Nextdoor.com is a big tech competitor uh, that's kind of like a if you mixed front porch form and Facebook together um, and had venture capitalists running it. Um, so um, we feel, so we're, we're kind of in a pickle. We, we get approached all the time, especially after the Post article, um, to say, oh, please bring front porch form to Phoenix or to Keene or to Albany or, you know, and so we're not set up for that. I mean, that's a very different business, totally different personnel requirements and capital requirements and everything. It's also not where my interests lie. Um, you know, we've raised our family here in Vermont, been here for decades. We're, we're you know, love Vermont and we're kind of local localists. Um, but also, fundamentally, I think if you tried to scale up Front Porch Forum, which is not what you suggested, but many people do, say, oh, we should spread it all over. I think you end up with another Facebook or Nextdoor. Um, you know, we love um, a restaurant in Burlington, Stone Soup. Anyone ever had been to Stone Soup? Yeah, it's great. Um, it's kind of like the, um, the uh, uh, food bar at uh, Hunger Mountain Co-op, uh, but in a restaurant format. It's just, and the guys have been running it there for, since the 90s, and they're just terrific. You go in, you have a conversation, you get hot, local, organic food, you know, well-prepared, it's just great. So if you walk in, you say, I love this restaurant. You should franchise it all over the country, just like McDonald's. Like, what would happen? It, it, would, it would turn into McDonald's. You know, maybe Panera, you know, which is kind of better than McDonald's. But, you know, um, but they certainly wouldn't be sponsoring the local Little League team, um, you know, and things like that. So, um, so we're keeping Front Porch Forum focused on Vermont. Um, and we are trying to provide a model, an inspiration, um, to other efforts around the country. And we are getting approached. Uh, the outfit in the middle there, New Public, that's their whole initiative, is to try to get more things like Front Porch Forum happening in other parts of the country. Um, but it's a tough road to hoe. Um, when what we found on a local online environment, whoever has critical mass in a community tends to hang on to that spot. And it can get fractured by politics. Um, so you have a local Facebook group, and then politics get entered in, and then you get a, a Trump version and a Biden version or whatever, and they split. That, that kind of thing can happen. But it's very hard to start something fresh. It's very hard to start something on your own platform that's not already kind of um, in, severely influenced by an existing platform. So it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough one. It's kind of like... Local journalism, uh, there's, there's some parallels there. Uh, yes, here and then there. Um, I was wondering if you had an idea, or you must have an idea, about going forward, what is some one thing you'd like to improve about the Front Porch Forum or change? Mm -hmm. Or what's the biggest problem you see ahead? Any of those. OK, thank you. So a future-facing question of, of biggest opportunities or threats or, or new ideas, new improvements. Oh my goodness, we have a long list of ideas we would love to implement. Um, we'd love to do a partnership with, with our still existent local journalism. We have tremendous audience on Front Porch Forum. We know that we're, we're convinced there's a very strong need in our democracy for local journalism. Front Porch Forum does not do local journalism. That's not our role. But could we somehow share our audience to get more people tuned in to fact-based local journalism. So we've been exploring that question with several different media outlets in Vermont. There's a lot of hurdles, a lot of complexity to figure that out. That's one thing we'd love to do so that in addition to, um, let me see, in addition to these four options, there'd be a fifth one, you know, like a, a local news feed. Um, which would show up on your front porch form. You click the button, it would take you to the bridge. Take, click this button, it would take you to Digger. You know, what the, there'd be headlines um, of you know, whatever's going on around you. And if you wanted to expand out the geography, that kind of thing. 
Um, lots of other ideas. Um, but, you know, my biggest, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I vacillate, depends on what day of the week you get me, between feeling very hopeful and fe feeling very challenged. Um, generally, though, I I'm, I'm come from a, you know, to, to start something, to be entrepreneurial, you got to be kind of stupidly hopeful. Um, and and that's, that's kind of where, more where I fall. Um, but I think, you know, Vermont is full of wonderful people um, and, and wonderful communities with lots of challenges, lots of struggles, serious ones, opioids and the economy and, you know, pandemic and homelessness. homelessness. Yeah, absolutely, on and on. And so, you know, this is my hope part of the talk. Um, yeah, um, but I see, I have this like incredible um, privilege in operating Front Porch Forum with my colleagues to see all this good going on around the state of people trying and working and making progress. Um, and so that makes me hopeful. And so our, what I think about with FPF is how can we help those people who are active in their communities, who are solution oriented, who are builders, connectors, um, how can we help them even more? And the local news feed is one idea, but we, we have others. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that, I guess. Was there another hand here? Yeah, I used to live in an area where we had open door, next door. That next door, yeah. I didn't know anything about the structural. And I, I read it for several years. Several communities sharing information look like a similar structure, structure, mostly local ads, and it was nasty. When I came here and started reading Front Porch, I thought, what is this? Is this the way? Oh, and I thought after a while, because we come for the summers, this is the way it's supposed to be. Well, I want to say, keep up the good work. You're sharing information, and it's real information. It's plus positive and negative, but it's, you know, it's still a positive atmosphere. I mean, open door was just, next door was just really nasty. It was like a nasty contest. Who could be the nastiest that day complaining about other drivers? You know, it was just like a waste, a complete waste of time. I stopped reading it, but they had a lot of followers. So keep up the good work. That's hey. Thank you. Uh, I just want to share, I respond to that briefly to say, keep up the good work. We work really hard at this, but we're in partnership with 235,000 Vermonters. So, you know, I see this as a, as a huge group effort. So nextdoor.com, just a little insight. They basically took our idea and raised $450 million of venture capital money. They've since gone public. Uh, they're uh, supposedly valued at several billion dollars. Um, they're all over the world. And when I talked to them, they, they wanted to see if we could do business together or whatever. And I looked at what they were doing, and basically their model, our model is kind of a block party. Like, can we move a block party where people have name tags and it's online, you know, but online, like a little, little bit every day? What was that, what was that uh, multi-billion dollar organization again? Nextdoor.com. And so, yeah, essentially. Um, it, but with with their model was a gated community. And I lived in one. And yeah. I was surrounded by other gated communities. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. And that was their, their premise was join next door and we can protect you from them. And I looked at that and I said, you know where this is going to go? And they've, they've all sorts of racial profiling and all that. Now that said, there are some good uses, just like with Facebook, you know, the good things happen on these huge platforms. But the question is, what's the balance? Um, yes. Um, I wanted to ask, and you touched upon this, but how do you how do you keep out, or do do you have a problem with like Russian trolls or people from Silicon Valley or people mm -hmm. trying to have false identities, and how do you keep them out? And you don't have to tell us secrets, but no, it doesn't. Can I trust I you? I appreciate it because most of the people in the forum are local. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, we, we have a whole team of people who's, it's our accounts team, and they watch every new member sign up. Um, and I mean, not in a spying way, but if, if 
George Washington signs up, you know, at one Main Street, that's probably not George Washington. Um, and, uh, you know, Jimi Hendrix signed up uh, last month, I noticed, and, you know, that, we jumped right on that. But, um, yeah, so we have a whole bag of tricks of, um, some are computer-based things of IP address matching and whatnot, and some are um, simply our staff just glancing through and noticing like, wow, six accounts that all kind of are the same, but they're all one letter different or something, you know, and, and they, you know, John Smith one at gmail.com, John Smith two at gmail.com, John Smith three. And so they're just looking for stuff. And when they, and so could somebody sneak in? Oh yeah. What would happen? Well, they'd read about a lot of lost cats. Um, <laughs> and usually they'd get bored and they'd move on. Um, so we're, our model, um, you know, what the internet does amazingly well is create huge soapboxes for people to get on and spout whatever they're going to spout. Front Porch Forum has created a 252 little soapboxes all around the state. And so kind of by design, we're not a huge target, but we're a small target. Um, so not Russian trolls, but, you know, the local guy who's all been out of shape about the design review board's decision and wants to post rumors about someone's, you know, making innuendos or, you know, so that's what we watch out for. Did, uh, did you see another hand over here? Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask about vocabulary. Uh, there are oftentimes things on there, and there's a word, and I have no idea what it is. As an older person, it's probably some technological thing mm. that they're advertising, but it would be great if they put a little, you know, this is electronic or whatever to let people know. That's great feedback. You should make note of that. Um, generally, we while we moderate every posting, we review every posting to see if it complies with our rules, we don't get involved. And so if my colleague who runs that team was here, she would say, post that on your forum. Encourage your neighbors to, so basically what we say to folks is, it's up to you to create the culture on your local forum that you would like to see. So if you want to see friendly stuff, if you want to see things better explained, if you want to see a discussion about the school budget, go ahead and, and, and post. We, we try to do reminders occasionally about the kind of things you mentioned, and, and, but that's good. We'll, we'll take that idea back. Thank you. Yes, in the back? Um, yes, can you have more than one account, um, like more than just your town, like the town next door or somewhere else? So, so the question is about access, and can you have multiple accounts or access to multiple communities? Our basic model is everyone's um, welcome to sign up for free in the community where they live, or if you have a second home, a uh, 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 deer camp, or whatever somewhere, or, or a summer home, um, you could set up two. Um, also, people are welcome to set up for their business. So you live in East Montpelier, you have a restaurant, and or, you know whatever, a food truck in, in Montpelier, you could set up two there. Also, people who live on a boundary, the software invites them to join one or the other or both. Um, public officials, like a state rep or a state senator who have served multiple communities, are granted access to all the communities they work in. But generally, when someone comes on and says, okay, I live in Colchester, and um, you know, I'm just really interested in what's going on in Barrie, uh, our, our model doesn't permit access for that. Um, so uh, we really are just trying to keep folks focused on the places where they are, or where they have a stake in the community. The, the reason for that is kind of anti-internet, you know, thinking. The internet, you know, information wants to be free and everyone has access to everything. But what we found is it's hard to get people to speak up um, online, believe it or not. I mean, some people, no problem at all. Um, <laughs> But for rank and file folks, it's hard. And so they have to feel comfortable. And so if it feels intimate and local, as, as someone expressed here a moment ago, um, then they're more likely to speak up. And so we did a lot of experimenting in our early years of boundaries and 
who gets you know, to, to be where. And what we found was if we keep it really feeling local, then people, um, we got a lot wider participation in who spoke up. And when we opened it up bigger, it started to turn in more to like one big soapbox. And then just a few people, I, I don't call them loudmouths, but because uh, I'm, I'm one of them. Um, you know, you just get a few personality types who are willing to talk a lot, and then everyone else gets quieter and quieter. So it's this tough trade off because we want to share, we want to give access. Um, but that said, uh, if you're in Montpelier and you go on to Front Porch Forum right now, you can look at forums in probably eight surrounding towns. So on our website or through our mobile app. So where it used to be just Mount Pelier. So we've, we've kind of, there's like a bullseye. Um, you know, so you can participate fully in the center of the bullseye and then you can read in the surrounding communities. One moment, I see a hand over here. Yeah, uh, thinking about bigger, uh, what do you do with a big place like Burlington? Does that have separate neighborhoods? Or yeah. Is it all one big? So how do, this, how do different towns work? So Burlington, in fact, is divided into 20 neighborhood forums, just as you suggested. So we live in the Five Sisters neighborhood in the South End. That's its own single forum. Um, South Burlington is divided into neighborhood forums. But the rest of the state is essentially one town, one forum, um, with the exception of like Buell's Gore, where there's three people. Um, that's just glommed onto Huntington. <laughs> Yes. I had another question about uh, towns. I grew up in, in the valley, Wakefield, and I don't have access, I think, mm. to, the, to the valley, even though I grew up there yes. and have all friends, and you know, that community is important to me, and I live in Montpelier now. Yeah. So, um, so Mad River Valley uh, is kind of an exception for us. We have the three towns of Warren, Wadesfield, and Faston are a single forum. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, uh, we look a blind eye to people who we kind of grandfather in. So someone, you know, lives in Colchester their whole life, and then they retire to South Burlington or, or whatever, name two towns. And they want to stay in their old town but also add the new town on Front Porch Forum. And we're fine with that. Um, so if you wanted to add a second profile to your account or add a second account on Front Porch Forum, you could do that. You just need a street address that you could claim uh, to enter into the system. Don't tell, uh, don't, don't tell <laughs> Chloe um, or Emily back, back in the shop, but yeah. Yes? No. Hi, I live in Montpelier. And there's about 20, maybe 24 houses on my street. But uh, I think there are about 1,000 people on Montpelier Front Porch Forum that are on my street. Everybody seems to be signing up for that street. <laughs> oh, so you're suggesting there are, are fake accounts? Well, there's like a 1,000 accounts for my street, as far as I can tell. I mean, an awful lot. And okay. there's only 20 houses on the block. What <laughs> street do you look like? Street? Summer Street. Summer Street. Um, well, we will take a look. Can I ask you, Susanna, to make a note of that, Summer Street? Um, so I, I guarantee there's not 1,000, um, but there could be uh, fake accounts. Um, so we're always on the lookout for those. Um, but uh, what happens? Also, which is not uncommon, is especially in rental areas, people will rent for a year and then move, but they'll leave, and I don't know if this is the case in Summer Street, but they'll, they'll leave their account on their old address as they move around the same town. We see that a lot in Burlington. Um, and so some people say, oh, Front Porch Forum would be a great tool for precisely locating everybody. It's, it's not really designed for that. It's designed to generally get people who are interested in a community in the same online space and sharing information and connecting. Um, so it's not so much about the precision. Uh, but but if, there's a, if there's something askew there, we, we, we'll, we'll dig into it. Thank you. Yes, here. You're a wholly owned private um, entity, you and your wife. Are. 
Yeah, family. Well, how, how do you, what are the sources of income? I know you do uh, requests for donations. I know you charge for ads. Yeah. yeah. But what, how does it break down? Um, sure. Thank you for that question. So question of our business model. So yes, Front Porch Forum is a for-profit um, Vermont Public Benefit Corporation. Um, my past experience is running nonprofits, and um, I was worn out uh, trying to chase down grant found, uh, funding and, and all that. And I thought, um, you know, let's let's set it, let's try Front Porch Forum like a newspaper. Most newspapers would be at the time more of a, a for-profit model. Um, and so we sell advertising. Uh, to Vermont businesses and nonprofits and government agencies, that accounts for more than half of our revenue. We also sell um, access packages, so any business or nonprofit or government entity can sign up for free and get you know this much access. If they want more access, they can pay ten dollars a month or twenty dollars a month, that kind of thing. Um, but for all just regular everyday folks or neighbor accounts, that's that's free all the time. Um, and then finally, we accept donations, which um, is pretty unusual when we started. Um, it's more common now. You'll see Seven Days and other for-profit businesses um, soliciting donations, given the changing changes in our economy and everything else. But we started, I'll tell you, um, because we started getting checks in the mail, um, unsolicited. Somebody sent us 20 bucks, somebody sent us $100, and finally I started calling people back and say, you know, this is free, like, you know. <laughs> and we get these stories, like, you don't understand. My elderly mother-in-law, we couldn't find a place for her to live. She needed to be close so we could help care for her. We thought she was gonna, she was gonna have to be like two towns over. We found a mother-in-law apartment three houses down, we didn't even know it was there, through front porch form. Here's 20 bucks, um, you know, and, and then, the other one I remember was someone sold their house without the use of a realtor through Front Porch Forum. And I said, 100 bucks, that's all you're giving us? <laughs> Come on, I want 3%, 6%. Um, but after, I don't know, 10 of those, we thought, let's give this a shot and, and see what happens when we pass the hat. And we got a tremendous response. We got a real outpouring of support, mostly lots and lots of small donations, uh, which is really meaningful. Um, the money matters, and what we've come to find out over time, the sense of, I don't know, investment uh, of being part of what we're working on seemed to get people to pay that much more attention to, you know, I gave 20 bucks, now I'm gonna get my neighbor to sign up, or now I'm gonna post, or now when someone goes out of bounds, I'm gonna speak up and say, hey, you know what, let's keep this civil. Um, so, in our early years, we kept backing off and saying, this is it's just a lot of work to run one of these campaigns. If anyone's ever been involved with a campaign like this, we kept thinking like, okay, this is the last time we're gonna do this. And then we get a terrific response financially and a terrific response of people being involved. And we say, we gotta do it again. Um, and so this year, uh, we're gonna do it in December. Uh, usually we do it in October, but we're we, um, gonna move it away from the elections and Thanksgiving and all that um, and try in December. Um, so, for anyone who's donated or considered that, thank you. Um, it's really appreciated. I think we're about the end of time. One, it looks like one more, one more comment. Yes, I'm just wondering what triggers an email to go out to us from front page forum? Is mm -hmm. it after a certain number of posts? Yeah, good question. So, as folks are probably aware, um, the forum goes out to most people in email format. You can also see it on the website. You can also see it through the mobile app. Um, and so Montpelier, I mentioned before, is kind of special in our FPF universe because it's so vibrant. Um, most places get one issue a day with maybe five postings, <laughs> maybe 10 on a big day. Montpelier, folks here can testify, is like three issues a day with 20 postings, sometimes four, depending. Uh, if people are talking about the post office or whatever the hot, <laughs> hot issue is, right? So um, yeah, our staff who moderate everything, so um, this is getting into the weeds a little bit, but most, the, by far the biggest email provider in our state is Gmail. 
people use Gmail, I'm sure half the room here does or more, yeah. And they changed their operating uh, procedures a while ago to cut off any email that was over a certain size. And so sometimes you get an email and you're reading it and you're like, oh, what happened? It just got cut off. That's Gmail saying, that's enough. Um, and so for us, it's about 20 postings. And if we go beyond 20 postings, um, it'll get cut off. And so um, when we hit 20 postings in Montpelier, which happens multiple times a day, um, <laughs> we hit publish and out it goes. In other, you know, more typical communities, um, it's the end of the day, end of the business day. So 4.35 o'clock, um, we look through everything, says, yeah, everything looks good to go. And we schedule a, a, a publishing round and 200 or whatever the number is that day, local forums go out. And a lot of communities, well, some communities don't even get one every day. It might be every two or three days they'll get an issue. I come from the Northeast Kingdom. Over here mm -hmm. when I first joined. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I think it was once a day you got it, but now it's multiple times. Rachel, do you want to mention in terms of emergency? Oh, that's a good point. Um, this question often comes up, but especially, I mean, here, here we are, not far from the Mooski River. Yeah, um, Could you repeat it? yeah I, thank you. Uh, talking about, um, my colleague wanted to me to make sure to comment about using Front Porch Forum during times of emergency. So um, Front Porch Forum is, has proven to be, it wasn't designed this way, but the way it's been used is it's been very useful during times of crisis. Floods, going back to Irene, the 2011 Lake Champlain floods, um, to 2023 and 2024. Um, other you know, major issue, disasters, the pandemic among them, um, people have used FPF. Because there are real people on our staff, Vermonters, reviewing every posting and deciding when to publish, when crisis happens, sometimes people think, oh, Front Porch Forum's not instantaneous, therefore I shouldn't use it during this moment of crisis. Please do. I mean, we're eager. That's part of our mission to serve each local community in the state. If there's a big fire, if there's a sudden road closure, if there's you know missing child, which we've dealt with, or whatever it is, missing elder, um, you know, post at the front porch forum. We'll mark it as urgent and we'll push it right out the door. And you know, in, in Montpelier's case, 8,653 local people. We'll get it in their inbox moments later. So we're very uh, pleased to be able to play that role and um, encourage people to, to use us in that fashion. Great. Thank you, everybody.